I love the Warthog. The M12 Force application vehicle has seen many iterations throughout the series, and some have been a little better than others. Regardless, all of them are fun to drive and play around with. There are few more exhilarating moments in a Halo match than when you successfully run a Warthog to and from bases with a flag. I don't even mind being the driver. This video is serving as a celebration of hitting 500 subscribers, which is a number you guys are already leaving behind. I'm very excited that people are enjoying the channel, and I'm ready to give you a cool video to watch. So for this one, which Warthog was best, and why do I love them so much? Let's talk about it. When a mommy and daddy elephant love each other very much, a miracle can happen. Here we see a healthy baby warthog. The Warthog as a vehicle was such an awesome idea. Some missing variants of the Warthog include Tropic and Arctic versions. The early concepts look quite different than what we received, but these were quickly formed into the Warthog, or should I say Puma, that we know today. In fact, Halo 3, ODST, and Reach all have the word Puma printed on the tires. It's a pretty neat detail. So the basic idea of the Warthog is this. There's one driver, a passenger that can gun with either weapon in a drive-by fashion, and a rear-mounted turret that a person could use to defend the driver, or to go all out in offensive mode. The Warthog in-game provides a means of transport, objective carrying, and so on. They're also just really fun to drive. Within the lore, they're used for reconnaissance, patrol, station defense, offense, and more. I couldn't possibly run through all the Warthog paraphernalia in my amount of free time, but I'll go ahead and show you my 15 Warthog merch items here. To begin, we have a Reach Warthog I found in a second-hand store a few years ago. I fitted a couple Reach Spartans and a Spartan 4 in the back. The design and weight are both really nice. Next, we have a Halo 2 Warthog packaged with a blue multiplayer Spartan team. Each day it becomes harder not to open. This was also found at the same second-hand store, which is a secret. Surrounding these are various Halo 5 Warthogs that either I found in Texas while on a mini vacation a few years back, or was given by my dad who saw them. There are a few variants, including Oni, UNSC, Urban, and even Swords of Sanghelios. Next up is the Halo Infinite Warthog. Before I explain my opinions on this one, I just want to say how weird it is that the package itself had no window into the object, just an image on the back. I thought it was a bit strange, but decided to roll the dice, and I was not disappointed. The Warthog is really cool, but it comes in a few pieces that you have to put together which is why the presentation would not have looked good or super nice with a windowed package. So to anyone out there still wondering and weighing the scales, go for it. Beginning to wrap up here, we have the Mega Bloks Warthogs. I love these things. Every once in a while they come out with new designs, new suspension systems, and so on. Here I have a Gauss Hog, rest in peace, a Flaming Hog, a Rocket Hog, another Gauss Hog with Chief and Arby. Oh, also I forgot about the uh, Arctic Hog, so I'm just going to put that in here. And finally, the two newest hogs. I decided I wanted to make the banished be friends with the human troops. It's as close as I'll get to Venezia, okay? Finally, I have a microscale warthog in my computer tower. I bought this as part of a seemingly rare line of Halo figures at a Hastings. Yeah, that long ago. If I can find an image or two to describe the set, I'll put them here. All of these warthogs are super cool and hopefully express just how much I enjoy the vehicles from the franchise. So now that you know what a Warthog is and how great they are, let's talk about the criteria that I will focus on as a form of review. First, I'll be going through each title in chronological order, looking at each variant of the Warthog. We will look into the experience from a driver, passenger, and gunner perspective. Also, the following overall points will be considered. How easy is the vehicle to operate? Is the vehicle useful? How good is the sound design? How good is the visual design? And finally, what is the overall feel of the vehicle? And I understand this is very subjective and you'll see as we go along that it is, um, but I'm still keeping it. With these criteria in mind, let's go ahead and get started. The Halo Wars Warthogs are extremely simple to operate, as they work by mouse clicks or absolute direction, just pressing A and they'll go. This sort of allows them to just go on their own, meaning my rating for ease of use isn't really applicable to this. 
these warthogs are usually meant for scouting operations. However, if in high number and containing possible upgrades, they can really be a force to reckon with. They are also cheap to make and require a few upgrades to get onto the field. For this, they get a 4 out of 5 stars for usefulness. The sound is okay, about as much as you would expect from a distance, since you are at a bird's eye view. Let's give that a 3 out of 5. The design is limited by the small size, but the skins are pretty interesting, back when that was a rarity. The graphics of the time definitely had restrictions though, and I'm grading everything today based on my modern opinion. Also, this is the HD version, so even more so. As such, I give this a 2 out of 5. The overall feel? Halo Wars Warthogs are extremely fast, can overwhelm in strong numbers, and generally feel safe as an option in-game. For this, they get a 4 out of 5. Halo Reach came with multiple types of Warthog. These include the normal, rocket, and gauss versions. These hogs are super easy to drive and maneuver, even around tight corners. Open maps like Highlands are great for these vehicles. 5 out of 5 on ease of use. The function is pretty solid as well. The chain gun is precise and can be reliably used to destroy enemy vehicles and infantry, though the overheat time is a bit annoying. The rocket hog can destroy enemy aircraft, but not many maps take advantage of this opportunity. The Gauss Hog is an overpowered beast, as always. The passenger riding along has a decent amount of control over their weapon fire. Despite all these good things, there is a downside. The Spartan laser causes a real pain in the ass for the Warthogs after Halo 3. This isn't exactly a problem with the Hog, but it means that any of the Reach Hogs can be squashed in one shot. I guess I need to consider that when making my rating. So across all three, they get a 4 out of 5 for functionality. The sound is also quite good, something you'd expect from a bulky yet light vehicle meant for rapid travel. 5 out of 5. Each one follows a similar visual design that I consider to be one of the best in the series. The roughened edges and dim sage greens are so emblematic of the military theming. 5 out of 5. Overall, the vehicle feels great and is super useful on almost all types of enemies. So again, 5 out of 5. The original Warthog is a thing of beauty. It has a monstrous roar, a heavy weight, and a chain gun that never stops. The downside, however, is the usage. No doubt swapping between each Halo title and MCC trips me up on controls, but this Warthog can be so slow to operate at times that it looks to your team as if you're sitting still. Consider a turn in a tight space or simply trying to take off after grabbing the flag. This vehicle is not fast in that respect, but it is very bulky. Once you're in, it'll take quite a bit of firepower to throw you out. This goes for both the original and rocket versions of the Hawk. For the Rocket Hog, there is such a long space between being able to fire again that it's nearly impossible to kill a moving target. Playing as a passenger is awesome, yet can make you a little nauseous. I know it does me. It offers more control and is the only first person view from a Warthog in the series. This was probably for a reason though. As cool as it looks, it doesn't work very well from a functionality standpoint. Meeting in the middle here, I give the ease of use a 3 out of 5, and the functionality a 3 out of 5. The sound, as mentioned, is great. Easy 5 out of 5. The look? This look is so nostalgic, even with my wild skins equipped on top. I give this a 4 out of 5. And for our overall feel, I'd have to say 4 out of 5. The nostalgia is probably causing me to lean hard to the right on this scale, but it's too hard to beat. Also, it's my feel, so I just have to be honest. Halo 2, baby, let's go. The regular Halo 2 hog absolutely shreds. This thing is so easy to drive, quick to start, fun to drift, etc. This ease of use is 5 out of 5. For the function, this vehicle is great for quick flag caps that could usually only be stopped by massive attacks, great snipers, or rockets. The speed of the hog assists in easy getaways, while the bulk of the hog is enough to provide support against stray bullets. 
passengers have a decent range of motion, about as much as any of the other future titles get in the series. Also, the Gauss Hog is insane. This thing can fire so fast and offer a kill with every single shot. 5 out of 5. The sound design is okay. The Gauss firing sound has a nice splat when it shoots its mini mac kind of round. I'd say a 4 out of 5 here. The visual design is as nostalgic as the first Warthog, just a notch up in the graphics. I think both the original and the Gauss look cool. The overall feel is great. When I see a hog in Halo 2, I know I can get easy kills or easily drive folks around for at least a couple minutes before being blasted. This one will be a pretty quick review, as I honestly just don't care much for the Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer as a whole. It feels strange and honestly nothing like Halo 2. The engine is tweaked off of Halo 4 and it really shows. The sounds are weird, the vehicle feels annoying to control. Let's just move on, shall we? The Halo 3 Warthog is something else. It's quite easy to drive and the chain gun can still shoot forever. However, there's one major problem. Halo 3 brought with it the Spartan laser, which can destroy a Warthog in one shot. This is something that has to be considered within its functionality. For use, I'd say there's a 5 out of 5 here. Super easy to drive and shoot with, allowing quick objective travel and evasion. For functionality, I'd say there are limits. One of the cooler things about Halo 3's hogs are the troop hogs. Marines can climb in the back with whatever weapon you give them, allowing you to drive through and shred anything in your path. Apparently it also makes you immortal because as I killed Marines for fun off screen, my allies turned bad and could not even kill me. It's pretty interesting. There is a downside. Every time I get into a hog in Halo 3, I know there's a chance I'll only be in it for a moment. There are so many things that can go wrong here. Spartan laser, gravity hammer, rockets. It seems that wherever the hogs are, these things abound as well. For this reason, I almost never use the Halo 3 hog, even though I still think it's fun when I do. This nets a 3 out of 5. The sound design is okay, nothing to write home about, 3 out of 5. The visual is pretty nice, though there's something about it that I just can't put my finger on. It seems like it's maybe too polished or just not gritty enough. I give it a 3 out of 5. The overall feel of the Halo 3 Warthog is not great in my opinion. It's fun to drive but I almost never use it for fear of it getting wrecked by an enemy within a moment's decision to enter. For this, I give it a 2 out of 5. The hog in this game is pretty easy to use. It can turn fairly easily and aiming is simple. 5 out of 5. The functionality of the warthogs in this game suffers the same problems of Region 3, the anti-vehicle weaponry. Aside from this, all the variant weapons function well. The normal turret can fire quite a long time before burning out. The rocket fires quick enough to have an effect, and the gauss is powerful but timed a little more fairly than those in Halo 2. The passenger view is average like the others. All this considered, I'd give the functionality a 4 out of 5. The sound design is absolutely terrible. It sounds like a little RC car. No joke, here listen. The mongoose actually sounds beefier by comparison. I'm not sure what happened here, but it was a mistake. 1 out of 5. The visual design, I also am not a fan of. This is the case with most of the Halo 4 designs, though there were certain things I really didn't mind. This isn't one of those. 
It looks even more plastic than that of Halo 3, so I'm forced to give it an even lower score. 2 out of 5. The overall feel when playing is nice. There aren't too many maps where the weapons necessary to insta-kill a hog are present, at least within the first minute or so. When the infinity weapon drops start coming in, it's probably best to not get into vehicles at all. Even still, I feel like the hog could probably help catch at least one flag. All these things considered, I give the Halo 4 hog a 3 out of 5 for overall feel. The Halo Wars 2 hog is a beast. Much like those of Halo Wars 1, these hogs are incredibly easy to direct, just point and click. The functionality is great as well. The hogs, once upgraded, can be used to do anything from recon, defense, offense, resource extraction, etc. For functionality, this is a 5 out of 5. The sound design is okay again, and I generally like the sound design overall in Halo Wars 2. This is probably biased, but 4 out of 5. The visual is actually quite nice for the size of the units. Seeing Halo Wars in HD is never something I thought I'd get, and these look even better than that. Matching the color of your team is also a cool bonus. 5 out of 5. The feel of these Warthogs is fantastic. They're easy to use, cheap, reliable. Overall feel, 5 out of 5. The Warhogs in this game are incredibly fun so far. 343 got the vehicle almost perfect in terms of handling. The only problem I have is that it's a little too bouncy and needs more weight. I'd give the Warhogs in this game a 4 out of 5 for ease of use. The main Warthog is pretty easy to use. The chain gun is okay, with shots spraying a lot but doing good amounts of damage in closer ranges. The passenger seat is about the same as all the previous titles except for Halo CE. What sets Infinite apart in terms of Warthog functionality is the introduction of the Razorback. This Warthog can carry things on its back, as well as a squad of up to 5 total Spartans, similar to the Troop Hog in Halo 3, except for this time we can use it in multiplayer. For items to carry, these include weapons like the Hammer, Fusion Coils, which is a bad idea probably, and even objective items like Power Seeds or Flags. This opens up a lot more opportunity when your team is screwing around and you need to cap the flag yourself it is now much more possible. For this alone, I have to give the functionality of Infinite's Warthogs a 5 out of 5. The sound design is great, I think. I don't really have any qualms with it thus far. 5 out of 5. The visual design? I find it somewhere between Reach and Halo 4, which weirdly works a little better for me. It's like Reach, but a little more plasticky, and the skin I have doesn't help much. The overall look is okay, though, and I love the Razorback design. I'd have to say 4 out of 5 for this one. Finally, how do they feel? They feel great. If there's a skewer in play, it can be a little rough. When I drive into trees, it's also rough. Oh my god, we're in a tree. Is this what you meant by retreat? <laughs> no. When I take a full team to cap a flag and no one knows what to do, it is also rough. Honestly though, I think this Warthog is one of the most fun to drive and use in multiplayer. I cannot wait to see how it feels in campaign, once they fix the bounciness. For this, 5 out of 5. Using the Halo Warthog is one of the most amazing gaming experiences I have ever had. I have friends today that I first picked up in a hog around 10 years ago, one of them helping me in the video even. I continuously have fun and get hyped while bringing flags back to base skirting every bullet and rocket thrown my way. Sometimes I even die, watching my teammate hop the flag all the way home, still celebrating when that cap is made. I'm probably looking way too hard into this, but the Warthog may just be one of the best creations in all of gaming history. It requires a crew to operate, a sense of time and urgency, and a need of planning and strategy. The feeling of honking at random teammates to get a squad, avoiding danger across the map, grabbing the objective and returning to score, all without speaking a word, 
to one another is something to behold. You may be wondering, well Onyx, you didn't say which hog was your favorite. Well, it definitely has to be the hog from Cursed Halo. JK, it's the Reach one. Either that, Halo 2, or Infinite. They're all kind of at a tie. If I could choose a type, it would be the Gauss with a Razorback in close second. So now that we have the bulk of information out of the way, what better to do than to end the video with a bang? Let's do both of the final Warthog runs just for fun. In these captures I do have some commentary, but mostly I'm trying to show a good route to take and also just enjoy myself. If this is where you head off, well I thank you for watching. If you've made it this long, why not subscribe and leave a like? Likes really help to get my videos out to more people, and yours would aid indefinitely. Beyond that, thanks again, and let's do some Warthog runs. I'll wait till that <laughs> shit happens. Okay. Don't be here when it blows. The thing I remember most about the CE Warthog run uh, was not understanding how it could possibly work on the ship because I saw the ship and this is apparently along the dorsal structure and me being a nerd uh, about marine life and stuff since I was a kid I, I knew that meant like the top right or like the back of the the ship or the body and so I was like that makes no sense and uh, yeah later I once I got into the internet and stuff, I found out, yeah, I, I was actually right, that makes no sense at all. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, it's still fun. I wonder if we can make it in one piece and only have to do one run. Normally I don't do these, but it saves like a millisecond if I can get through it. Um, there's one, if you don't know, there's also one of those that has a the talking grunt or the grunty thirst character. It feels really good to drive uh, this heavy warthog compared to uh, the infinite one. The infinite one kind of bounces around all the vehicles do really in that game so far. Off the side. Uh, my friend told me that you can get up top there and make that jump. I have tried so many times and it's just not possible. I refuse to believe it's possible. Okay, we are gonna wait here. Pay our respects to Foe Hammer. Oh, that was nice. You guys are rude. Let's get it. Okay, I gotta be careful about the jump that's coming up soon because it does uh, occasionally screw up and kill you if you land uh, flat from too far of a jump, it can kill you, so... I think we're... yep, okay. We should be able to clear it. I have died just by landing, and if that happens, I apologize. Okay, no, we're good.
This Warthog run is so, so fun. One of the very first games I ever completed on my own, and it was an experience I don't think I'll ever forget. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. That would suck. <laughs> All right. There's two songs that play here that, that mess up and get into each other and glitch out and it still has never been fixed, I don't think. So, uh, yeah, we're going to call this one here. Let's go into Halo 3s. Here we go. All right, let's do this. Come on, Spartan. Go, 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 go. go. So, uh, another little bit of trivia for those who don't know. The same uh, Grunty Thirst uh, grunt can be found later on. There's a chopper behind where we are now. If you play this on four-player legendary co-op, you get uh, ghosts. And I think there's even a mongoose you can get somehow. Um, but yeah. I gotta say, um, although it was novel and very, very fun in Combat Evolved, the fact that you're literally escaping a halo ring that's falling apart beneath you in this one just adds so much um, urgency to it, and I just I love that about it. The one thing I don't particularly love about this Warthog run is um, on higher difficulties, the Sentinels can ruin the fun of it, um, and it's supposed to be hard, but the Sentinels will, you know, they'll blast you, so. Alright, let's get to the middle there. I suppose that can be said for the first one too, though, the, the flood can really mess you up as well. But I do like the presentation that this one was uh, able to have versus the first game, because this game had a uh, you know, it had a lot more, you know, a lot more time behind it and a lot more technology, and so the things it, it's able to do are are amazing. The big set pieces like this, so badass, and everything just falling apart beneath you. I just, yeah, it's awesome. I still remember um, on the channel somewhere I have a, a video of us doing the annual achievement and my friend Joe, he gets to the head of the pack and his ghost somehow and he's like, don't worry guys, follow me. <laughs> and then he immediately, uh, oh no, 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 no. Okay, he immediately drives off a cliff <laughs> or, or falls down the hole. Yeah, he, he comes right here. He's like, don't worry guys, follow me. He drives straight into that hole right there. Oh, that's so funny. All right, we got this. Don't worry about it. Okay. Let's go. Run over the popcorns. Yeah, I remember the first time I beat Annual um, to get Recon. It was such a such a crazy experience. It was me and a bunch of people that were like twice my age, and uh, you know I I could hold my own even back then, and so. You know, they, they didn't mind having me along, and because I could, you know, I could actually help rather than hinder the experience. But it only took us a couple tries. I think the hardest part was uh, getting to the run in the first place, and then the run, we were just having fun, other than the Sentinels, but, man, that was in 2009? Man, time flies. Oh no! 
Not gonna lie, it would have been hilarious if one of those hit us in the face. <laughs> we call those the, uh, we call those the Doritos. Like, flying Doritos! <laughs> This part right here killed me the first time I went. Because I knew, I, it was like, there's nowhere to go, like, what do I do? And um, the thing killed me, and as soon as it killed me, I looked to my left, and I was like, oh, we can curve around. Um, another cool thing to realize about this whole Warthog run is that you are, you are chasing around the same circle as you do around the control room in Combat Evolved. And in, uh, in the, I think it's the fourth mission, yeah. So, it's pretty neat. Like this, this rock formation right here should give it away um, if you play that, because this is a, a remake of that ring, so you're in the same area just on, you know, the third version of it. It's pretty awesome. Woo! Awesome. So cool. Bye bye, Warthog. We'll miss you. <laughs> okay, I think that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me ramble about how much I love Warthogs and. If you have a different opinion on me, uh, than me on what Warhog is the best, then let me know. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.